Two number one seeds were in action last night of the NBA playoffs, second round. The Boston Celtics hosted the Cleveland Cavaliers. What in the world did you take away from that matchup? That the Cleveland Cavaliers are not ready. They're not ready. I'm sorry. And just bring out the push broom at this point. That's what, that's what I took away from it. Now, I know it was just game one, and anything can change. But I can tell you right now, I realize that they really need Jared Allen on the floor, the Cleveland Cavaliers. They really need him on the floor. And the Boston Celtics are without Christophe Porzingis. So you mean to tell me that Jalen Brown was just able to waltz his way to the basket anytime he wanted to? And then Derek White said, let me get my turn? And that was it? Yeah. The, the series is over. The series is over. I'm, it's just over. <laughs> it's over, but okay, let's consider. The Cleveland Cavaliers just came out of a game seven against the Orlando Magic, a very physical series all the way down to the wire. So it could be that they're just worn out with tired legs, whereas Boston Celtics had like 10, 15 days off waiting for their match. <laughs> you know? You're right. You're right. But it doesn't take away the fact that Derek White went off as usual. But Peyton Pritchard was the biggest surprise, 16 points off the bench. Jalen Brown was balling. But Jason Tatum, for some reason, he could not get it going, though he finished the game with 18 points and 11 rebounds. I'm happy to see that he's finally uh, taking notice when his shot is not off and he's just doing other things to stay involved in the action instead of launching three three pointers after three pointers. That's what he did last season. And I'm glad that he has mm -hmm. some self awareness and he knows that, oh, shoot, I'm not jamming tonight. Let me get the ball to my others. You see, that's what's so great about the Boston Celtics makeup in their roster. He doesn't always have to be great because if he's not great and Jalen Brown is great, then, then they're good. And then if you got Derek White, because he's going to always, that Derek White. Again, Boston Celtics juggernaut. He didn't. He didn't go off until like the second half. And once he hit that three pointer, it was a. When that three pointer went in at that time, everything after that was money. It was a wrap. What I'm saying is this: if for some reason Jason Tatum has an off night, if he had an on night, then it would have been a, a bigger blowout. So I just don't know if the Cleveland Cavaliers. Matter of fact, I know they don't have enough. And I think they're kind of small without Jared Allen on the floor. Because if you think about it, Evan Mobley, he's not really a shot. I mean, he doesn't really shoot the ball like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, and then if Chris Stapp's court of the remotely comes back during this next three games, because I'm saying it's going to be a sweep during these next three games, then what they, what what, is, what the world Cavaliers do then? They don't have exactly. enough firepower, I'm sorry. Yeah. They don't have enough. They just don't have enough. And I'm sorry, though. I know that Donovan Mitchell didn't put up as many shots as he normally does, but he'll need to do that the next time. He has to. He just has to do more. Mm. He has to do more. I disagree huh? there because that's well, why they're in this position. Because players are just accustomed to him shooting the ball 30 times. They're not even looking for their shot. Yeah, you talked a little bit about the Cavs missing Jerry Allen. Yes, I agree there. But Evan Mobley, right, seven foot tall, he only had one block. You mean to tell me he's not protecting the paint at all? There is no hesitation for the Boston Celtics to get in the paint when no. Evan Mobley is there. And sometimes, no, no. I'll be honest, sometimes even with Jerry Allen there, pit players are still just waltzing in the paint. The Cavs have to play better interior defense, or I agree with you. This is so over. I already have the Boston Celtics coming out of this series, but especially after watching the game one, I'm like, oh, this is going to be a sweep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But this is the thing. Jared Allen and Evan Mobley, they do not have – what they're missing in their game is a dog presence, right? You, you don't get that. We'll talk about the second game because that game, that that person, we'll talk about it, just as tall as probably um, Evan Mobley, just as tall, just as lanky, right? But that mm -hmm. dog presence is there. And so that's why players, for when they're playing up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, they're not afraid to go in the paint. As a matter of fact, sometimes if you've watched any of their previous games during the regular season, it's almost like Jared Allen and Evan Mobley opened up the, they opened up the space for them. 
Yes. I've seen them move. Yes. I, I've seen them move out of the way. They don't want no smoke. They don't want to take no charge. They never, mm-hmm. you know, they don't. They don't put fear into anybody who's coming downhill. That's just what I'm saying. So right, if, right. If, if you don't even have Jared Allen in there, at least he will try to get a block. And we're only going to rely on Evan Mobley to help with that. This series is over because you know uh, Jaden Brown ain't got no problem, Charles. He ain't got no problem. None. You don't care. None. No. You don't postalize no. anybody. And if you don't even present any dog presence, why would I be afraid to go into the paint? I don't care. So that's what I'm saying. And then one of the other things, I hope that Evan Mobley, I don't know when their series season will be over, but I hope he works on some type of shot, some type of signature signature shot. At least if they have Chris Porzingis, the Boston Celtics, you know Chris Porzingis shoots three from the, from the perimeter. Right? You know, he, his game is a little bit more flexible and a little bit more uh, mobile. Evan Mobley, I mean, what are we going to do? So then if Darius Garland, and they have two shorties, Darius Garland and Jared, I mean, excuse me, Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, the shorties compared to what they got going on um, with the Boston Celtics. So then we got length that's a concern for me when we're talking about Boston Celtics up against the Cuban Cavaliers, right? Yeah, exactly. Wow, you summed that up pretty good. I mean, it's it, – I. It was hard to watch last night's game because it just lacked the firepower that I was expecting from the Cavs coming out of the series with the Magic, right? From what we witnessed in that series, I was like, oh, they're going to take that and give it to the Boston Celtics and at least give us six games, at least. But I'm not even seeing that. Game two will be the telltale uh, sign for me because I think the Cavs had tired legs. If they show up like they did in game one, in game two, I, I'm going to start thinking that maybe the wrong team advanced to the second round. Right. You know, that's a good point because I do believe, and I know this is all speculation at this point, that if it was the Orlando Magic, they would have gave Boston the business. I'm not saying they would have won the game, but, but Boston would have had to work a little bit harder for it. I don't believe the Boston Celtics worked hard for this win. I just don't feel like they worked hard enough. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. almost like, to your point, the Cleveland Cavaliers used their game one, and because they were so beat up from the Orlando series, right? They came into this one a little bit rested. I mean, like a little bit tired. But guess what? This is the playoff. You can't be tired. I don't care how long, when your last game was, if you want to advance to the next round. I don't know. I just wasn't impressed with the play. I think that hopefully they'll come with more energy for game two, the Cleveland Cavaliers and that they'll be putting on a little bit more physicality. I think this, that was needed for sure in this. If you want to slow down the Boston Celtics, if you right. want to put a monkey wrench in their game right. plan, because what you gave to them, that was almost like they could have did that in the YMCA uh, gym or something. I mean, it, 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 wasn't, it wasn't enough for me. It didn't give me enough. It didn't give me enough. Okay, absolutely. Okay, so Boston got the victory, 120-95, to 95, now hold a one-game lead. So let's move on to the next game between the Dallas Mavericks and the OKC Thunder. I know this is a series that you are glued to the TV on. What is your biggest takeaway from this series? I mean, it's just game one, right? Now, see, I feel a little bit different about this game than I did the previous game against Boston and the Cavaliers, right? This game, for some reason, I know that although the Mavs lost and the OKC, OKC was able to keep them below 100, I know game two is going to be different. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that same feeling about the previous series. Does it make sense? Yeah. Because this one right here, I know for a fact, I don't think the Mavs were anticipating OKC to be this dominant on defense. And that Lou Dort, again, what you won't see in the box score is Lou Dort putting people in jail. <laughs> He's going to put you in jail. Uh-huh. He's going to put you in jail. He did Brandon Ingram in the series before this one. And I'm telling you right now, Luka Doncic didn't know what to do. He on him like white on white. Ah, he was. He was. And that's and why. I loved every minute of it. He was so, 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 so much so that Luka Doncic's shot was, was, you know, uncharacteristic of him. You know, he's going to get a shot off regardless. I mean, Luka Doncic had him a little shook. He ain't going to say it, but he did. Yeah, he ain't going to. Even Kyrie talked about post game. He said, well, you know, tonight's game really felt like a regular season game. You know, a lot of a lot of foul calling. It lacked yeah. intensity. So I expect the Dallas Mavericks to come back and make adjustments for yeah. game two. So OKC Absolutely. has to be very mindful of that and not take their foot off of their necks. 
because if they do, this series is going to be tied 1-1 before OKC can even blink. Absolutely, 100%. Because I don't think, I know for a fact we did not get the best of Luka Doncic. I know for a fact we didn't. He wasn't ready. He will be next time. That's what I do. That's what I believe, right? And then even Kyrie Irving, you know, I, I, it's just going to be different. It's going to be different. I will say this. Oklahoma City Thunder, that shed home grid, Evan Mobley got, couldn't, even, couldn't even light a candle to that. We talking somebody with some dog in him? Shit got dog in him. I'm sorry. I, I'm, what? He don't care? Yeah. He going to go up. He going to go up. He going to get it. Whether it works or not, he going to still do it. I love it. I am here for it. So, yeah. Okay, on a side note, though, as it relates to Shaq, seeming as though they announced – uh, rookie of the year very recently and he lost I think he only got maybe what one or two first place votes and Victor Wimbenyama took the rookie of the year award um how much of that you think fuels Shet Holmgren in this series and in the playoffs as a whole to let people know oh oh y'all y'all chose Wimby over me watch this you know I don't I don't think you know what I don't think so because it, let's just really be honest about the landscape of rookie of the year for this season. When Bayama was going to win it way before he even got drafted. Let's just be honest. Why would anybody watch OKC? Shit was out his first year, right? So we have been ingrained if you've been touched by the NBA in any fashion prior to the 2024 NBA season. When Bayama was all up and through, and he wasn't even playing in the league. Now he's in the league, and they talked about him so much as though the Spurs were top six in the West. And they weren't. Like, what? So when Bayama was going to win it regardless, regardless. But if you had watched Oklahoma City Thunder, and if you were tuned in to what Shet Holmgren did for uh, this season, he would have had at least had a little bit more than two first-place votes, in my opinion. But people, they weren't watching him. I'm just going to be honest. They weren't watching him. Why would they mm-hmm. need to when the league was putting down everybody's throat? Victor with my number. So, I mean, you know, he won it. That's fine. But Shed Holmgren, I think he was going to ball regardless. He missed yeah, the well, I tell you, I tell you one thing. They may not have been watching him during the regular season, but they are forced oh, to watch him show down in the playoffs. <laughs> you Absolutely. know, his team, yeah, ball it. Okay, so OKC was able to get 16 points from Aaron Wiggins off the bench. But I have a question for you. Is uh-huh. there any room for Bismack Biombo? Because I saw him looking real bored on the bench in last night's game. Is there any room no. for him? No, no, I don't think so. No, no, the answer is no. Because mm. who would you take minutes from? You know, I guess Shet will have to get in serious foul trouble. Maybe. And, you know, and the other Jalen Williams him as well in order for uh, Bismack to get some runs, I guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that'll be the only way, and it would be for a few minutes. I promise you. As soon as his legs get warm, he's going to be pulled out. I can promise. <laughs> he will not have an – I don't see him having an impact as long as he had the home run is healthy. I don't see it. Okay. Not okay. a major impact. No, no way. No way. Would you? I wouldn't. Yeah, it's hard. Season? Oh, my gosh. Shay Gilders Alexander. That baller is amazing. It's amazing. He did. I heard someone, I was listening to something earlier today, and they said that he outplayed uh, Luka Doncic. Yeah, he did last night. He did. Yeah. He did. He was here. 29 points. Oh, man. Nine rebounds. Yeah. Clean. It was a clean game from him. Oh, my gosh. And the thing about it, see, this is the thing. And then, you know, Jalen Williams, he, the Jalen that starts, he always comes through. But he was a little off the first three quarters. But that fourth quarter, oh, my gosh. I said, look, it's, what is going on? I just think that, because if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Oklahoma City, City, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they actually outplayed in all the statistical categories that's listed on the NBA app, except uh, I want to say the last one. And I forget what the name of that category is. But Oklahoma City, they was, they was ready. They was ready, they were waiting, and they showed up. I want them to take that, intensify 10 more percent or 15 more percent or 50 more percent and get ready for the Mavs in game two. Because I think the Mavs in game two is going to show them something. That's what I believe. Oh, yeah. Well, the Mavs shot 39% from the field. That's uncharacteristic, right? Yeah. But if you uh-huh. look at it, they had balanced scoring. 
So I'm thinking like, if Luca doesn't have a good game and Kyrie doesn't have a good game, is this what the Mavericks look like? Yes, yes, yes. Unlike, unlike the Thunder, if Shea Gilgis' game is off, perhaps Jalen Williams can take over. You may get some more production from Shea. And, you know, they went away from Giddy, right? If they go back to Giddy, if for some reason Shea Gilgis is off, Giddy can go off. And then don't let the don't let Jalen from the uh, from the bench come. And then and Andrew Wiggins, hello, welcome to the Thunder. I mean, he yeah. came in un, un, unbeknownst to everybody and showed up. You know, I'm just saying, it's just and let Lou Dort put you in jail on that defense. Oh my God. Yeah, that's why I can tolerate Lou Dort only giving seven points because I know all of his energy is expounded on the defensive side of the basketball. You got two yes. little points from Giddy and OKC still won. So you mean to tell me OKC got nine points from two of their starters and still managed to win the game yep. against the Dallas yep. Mavericks. Wow. Another thing about Dort, he'll lock you down on defense, but for some reason he always will hit a, a timely three-pointer. He'll always do a timely layup. You know, when he gets his mm-hmm. little points, it's always a timely one. It's like, yeah, we needed that at that moment. Thank you, Jordan. Now go back on defense. <laughs> it's so timely. I don't, but but then, you know, there are some players on the Mavs. What is that? The P.J. Washington? Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know. I mean, we'll see what they've got to bring, but I think there's just so many more players. The one, And I just love the fact that the Thunder seem to play loose. They play loose. They giggling on the floor. Of course, they were winning, of course. But it's just like they give me a certain type of energy like, you know what, y'all, we just out here having a good time. Now, we're serious, but it's so much fun for them. You know, they, they, they're they playing free. I, that's how I feel. And that's why they, oh, get yeah. these, they, they, get, they got the win last night. They were laughing on the floor. I said, yeah, that, that, that part, right? And maybe they don't really know how much – I think they know how intense it is. But because this is their first time here in this group, it's just so much fun too, you know? Yeah, you could tell they hang out outside of basketball as well. Absolutely. A- absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so OKC got the victory 117 to 95 now hold a one game lead over the Dallas Mavericks. Tonight's game featuring the Indiana Pacers and the New York Knicks. Game oh, 2, New York Knicks have a one game lead on the Indiana Pacers. Oh, my God. Now, this is a series that I am just locked in. I just want to see how the Indiana Pacers will respond to being down in New York and what I believe having the refs against them. Are they going to beat down the New York Knicks? That's what I want to see. See, this is the thing about it. Likewise, for me, will the Pacers overcome the referees? And the only way to do that is to make sure they have a, a nice, substantial lead. Can they do that, right? Because at the end of the day, they can. If they're going to be fighting against the refs, they're going to lose. It's going to be a losing battle. You cannot let the refs determine your outcome. So you got to do everything you can in your power to make sure that you control that. And I want to know if the Pacers can do that tonight. I agree. Yes. Yes. I'm looking forward to Halliburton to get more involved in terms of scoring points. Now he can assist. He could. He can get you some assists. But I need him to score as well. I need him to get back to before he had the hamstring injury. That's what I'm looking mm-hmm. for in Tyrese Halliburton. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and then, yeah, uh, yeah so uh, what's your prediction on tonight's game, though? Who who wins? I think the Knicks is going um, go to go up, too. You yeah. know what? I do, too. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's but I would be, boy, I tell you. Oh, man. But I would be elated if the Pacers can tie the series 1-1. But I do believe the Knicks are going to win this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 2-0. Yeah. 